Right, we have a slight problem with the old design. Each floor position has two LEDs inside it. So this is a ground floor, so we've got two LEDs wired in parallel. First floor, second floor, third floor, etc. All the way up to the 13th floor. And the arrows have got three LEDs inside them. And as I said before, these have each got two LEDs. Now the current consumption of these LEDs I've um, got off the specs on the internet from the company I bought it from and yeah I can't spell parallel <laughs> the LEDs are 25 milliamps now I thought the white ones were slightly more but they're not they say continuous running is 20 milliamps maximum 30 so I've, I've leveled it out at 25 milliamps so when you've got two LEDs wired in parallel it's consuming twice that so two in parallel 50 milliamps there was an option to put these LEDs in series, which means it will consume the same amount, but you need more voltage to run them. But these LEDs run at about three volts. Wiring them to an Arduino five volt output means they won't really reach full brightness. So I decided to wire them in parallel. Now all the wiring down this side is called the common wire. This joins to all of the LEDs and it's wired back to the negative. Now, the wiring on these boards for all the LEDs, remember this is only showing like two examples here, like the eighth floor and the ninth floor. So the common wire is already soldered to each and every LED going all the way across the board. And really, I didn't want to change that because um, it's like quite a lot of work to basically unwire every single LED and do it all again. So these are the wires that go up to each individual LED set. So the, for example, the yellow wire goes up to the board up there and that probably rigs up to either the first floor or the second floor. And so then always there's two LEDs on this wire here. Um, so if I just pull back this rubber sleeve here, you can see what's behind there. So each, resist, each resistor is wired to each one of these wires and that just limits the current a little bit because delivering five volts directly down to two LEDs wide in parallel. Although this will share the current, it still wasn't quite enough. So I had to put what I worked out to be an 80 ohm resistor in series there. So this bit's already done. So we've got the common wire going through all the LEDs on the board. And then we've got um, a pair of LEDs wide in parallel, which do each digit, like for example, floor eight. That comes back as a different color wire, so it could be the yellow or the blue, then I did green, white, orange, brown, all the way through the color code, so I know which wire corresponds with which digit on the board up there. Um, so this is the wire coming back. So we've got a yellow wire there, for example, or well, that could be this yellow wire here. Then it goes through the resistor on here. There's a resistor. Then it goes to the Arduino board output. So the Arduino board is switching a five volt positive onto each wire to light up the LEDs. I found the Arduino board um, as a continuous rating could only switch 20 milliamps. Now considering that with the wires, well with an individual LED at 25 milliamps, that's already over it, but um, they say that's a continuous running current. Um, it can go more than that. I think up to about, um, it might have been about 30 milliamps or something. Um, so it will probably run one LED quite happily, but two, no chance. It will probably do it for a short time, but the thing is this project needs to be reliable. Once I send this out to Isaac and James, um, I can't really get it back to repair things. I want to get it right now. So I cannot wire these directly into the Arduino board as they are here. I need one of these. Well, not just one of these, but I need one of these per output. A little experiment. So I have a five volt power supply, which come from an old digital camera, I think, but five volts and it delivers 1.5 amps, but I need nowhere near that amount of current. So there's my five volt supply. So we've got a red and a black. I've got two LEDs here wired in parallel with the resistor on the end. So if I connect the positive to the end of here, 
this is what the Arduino board will be doing. It'll be switching the positive wire onto that resistor there. There we go. These are really bright, by the way. Look at this. But the thing is, the current flowing between this wire and that pin is too much, and it will blow the output. So this is where the transistor comes in. We should have the LEDs connected onto this side. Then what the Arduino board does is it gives a small voltage on this pin, and then that then delivers the, the power from the positive through the LEDs here, and then out to the negative. But I've had to wire this in a slightly different configuration. And this is called an emitter follower. So a little bit of a bodge job there, but this is just for demonstration purposes. Our positive supply goes on to the other side and the LED should not light. Now you may see it glowing in a minute when I'm twisting the wire on. That's because I'm, using, I'm touching my fingers on the transistor here. It's allowing a little amount of current to go through. And that's basically what a transistor does. So the transistor is doing all the work here. It's switching the 5 volt supply between here onto here to light up the LED. But it needs a very small amount of current. So now I'm not overloading the Arduino board. All it needs to do is supply a little amount of current and I'm going to do that by making my finger wet and it's going to, well, lick it. There we go. Yeah. And then I'm going to touch it between here and here. And the transistor amplifies that current. There we go. Now if I were to do that without the transistor, touching from there to there, transistor's not part of the circuit and that's all the current that it can go through there. It's not much. So a transistor is an amplifier. It takes the load away from the Arduino board and that's what I have to do now. So if I were to draw this into the circuit here, feeding the transistor a five volts and I'm letting the Arduino board feed a little current into there, which then allows the transistor to do all the work and switch the four five volts through the transistor onto the LEDs. To connect this negative wire from the power supply, so there's the power supply, this is the negative wire, I'm going to connect that into the negatives that run up to all the LEDs. If I now get my positive and I dab it onto all the other wires, we should get an LED light up on the board. Yeah, that's quite cool. Other one. We've got three LEDs on these arrows up here, so I've had to change the resistor uh, configuration slightly. That's six LEDs all wired in parallel. Now we're going to see how much load that these take. So I'm going to fit the multimeter in line with the current that's being consumed by the LEDs. So for that, I need to reconfigure my multimeter leads into the amps and put this on the amp setting. So now I have to make the multimeter part of the circuit. So one wire of the power supply is going to go around one lead. Then this is the other lead. So now the positive is going through the multimeter and back on that lead. So if I dab this onto an LED somewhere, it will show me how much current's being consumed by it. So let's go with the six LEDs all at once to begin with. Yeah, 125 milliamps. So that's way off scale of what the Arduino board would be able to handle. Let's do the other digits now. So let's do a double. Ground floor oh, and first floor. So ground floor, two LEDs, 43 milliamps. It should all be the same, 43, 40. E2, all roughly the same. There we go. That's quite cool. <laughs> ah, little things. Well, that's about it, really. So I need to now make the circuit board. 
with all these transistors in place. And for that, I have ordered this circuit board. Now, the reason I've ordered this one is because on the back we have a common track. Now, I could have just ordered what's called Vera board, which has tracks going vertically only. But I've ordered this one, I found this one on the internet, because this has an unusual horizontal track going all the way along there, and then it has sections of vertical tracks. So this is ideal for what I want it for, because what I can do is I can put the 5 volts going along this track here, and then the individual transistors for the floors can then come off of this track onto these ones. So I could have like ground floor transistor here, first floor, second floor, third floor, fourth floor, and one of the pins will be connected onto this track that goes across here. Now you can do that with variable, but this is makes the job much easier because I don't need to put links across the ball to every single transistor. That essentially does it for me.